Welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. We are back today with renowned Islamic scholar, Dr. Bill Warner. His website is Political Islam. He is teaching us today about Islam here in America. And I urge our viewers to go to his website, Political Islam, and start ordering books and start reading. Do your homework so you understand the background as to what we're talking about today. Dr. Bill, welcome back. Good to be back. Let's discuss politics. There are four people, uh, three currently in Congress and one who has left the Congress to become Attorney General in Minnesota. I'm referring to um, famous Muslim politicians in America, Ilhan Omar, Rashida Tlaib, uh, Keith Ellison, who left the Congress, to uh, become attorney general in Minnesota, and Andre Carson. All are proud Muslims. Let's talk about their agenda and if it's different from what most Americans might expect. Well, their agenda is quite simple. <clears throat> I can give it to you in one word, Sharia. It is Muhammad, when he moved into Medina, this is the Hijra migration, Medina was half Jewish and half Arab. When he died 10 years later, all the Jews were gone and every Arab that was in Medina was a Muslim. Now, we need to understand that there are some 89 verses in the Quran, see that math thing again? There's 89 verses in the Quran which say that everyone is to pattern their life after Muhammad. But what did Muhammad do? He preached the religion of Islam for 15 years, no, for 13 years and only converted about 150 people. His religion of peace was not a success. When he went to Medina, he became a politician and a jihadist. And by the way, this is not something I'm making up and putting on top, top of it. It is clearly laid out. So he was overwhelmingly successful with politics and jihad. So therefore, what does Keith Ellison need to do? He needs to be the same way. He brings about the Sharia as the whole purpose of Islam. And once you live in a Sharia society, the original society is gone. Let me explain to you how these two different societies work. Our civilization is based upon the concept of critical thought, scientific thought, rational thought, and it has its ethical principle of the golden rule, which I call the unitary ethic. Islamic society, the Sharia society, is based where all knowledge is authoritatively decreed in the Quran, the Sirah, and the Hadith. If it, anything contradicts that, then the things are wrong. And the, how you're treated under Islamic ethics is dualistic. Whether you're a Muslim, you're treated one way, a brother and a sister, or if you're not a Muslim, you're treated as politely, but in deep down, you're an enemy. So this is what we have. <clears throat> it is the purpose of Sharia to bring about the Islamic civilization. So what Keith Ellison and all the rest of them are intending to do is, over a period of time, thin slice of salami out of whack, no, no big chunks, piece by piece, bit by bit, bit <clears throat> our society becomes more Islamic, more Sharia compliant. Here's an example. This happened to my daughter. Her kid came home with a note from school which said, no more marshmallows can be brought to school. Why? So she goes to, the, why is this? So she went and asked someone in the school system. They said, well, the Muslims came by and said that marshmallows contain pork, gelatin, and so therefore they don't want their children being around it. So therefore no one can bring marshmallows to the school system. Now this is a small thing but it is a micro slice of the society that my daughter lives in because now then a child cannot even bring a marshmallow to school because it upsets the Sharia people. So this is very subtle. It's very slow, but it's, it's, that is its purpose. Well, on a big picture, let's go back to the beginning. Uh, I've studied the American political system my whole adult life and been involved in it for that 40 plus years. I remember reading that Thomas Jefferson was so concerned about what he was reading in the Quran that he, in his writings, and he made it public, said, if you're going to be a member of our new American society, you have to choose between your religion and the new American society because they are not compatible and you can't be both. What did he mean by that? Well, he just said the same thing that I said. You can be 
you can be an atheist, you can be a Jew, you can be a Hindu, you can be a, I don't know, make it up, witch, and be an important part of our society and be a harmonious part of our society and a productive part of our society. But once you have an agenda, which states that the people you're living amongst, first off, they're unclean and lower than animals and despised by Allah, that's you and me, Barry, then we have a divisive element here someone who's not pulling in the same direction we are, but actually wants to move in the opposite direction. Islam is a totalitarian system. And under a totalitarian system, you and I would not be having this conversation. So we have amongst us people who want to change our entire civilization, and not just change it, but to make our previous civilization go away. Take Afghanistan, which used to be Buddhist. How much Buddhism do you find in Afghanistan today? Zip, none. And that is Islam at its best. So within America, let's be more specific. You have at least these four members raising their right hand and swearing to uphold the United States Constitution. Now, as everybody knows, none of them swore in on the Bible, which is traditional in American history going all the way back to George Washington. They swear in on the Quran, but they promise to defend and uphold the Constitution. The American Constitution has equal rights for everybody and a whole plethora of additional rights like speech, uh, assembly, political beliefs, religious beliefs, and so on. Are they lying when they take that oath? A politician who would lie? <laughs> Barry, I thought you said you'd been studying politics. <laughs> But at least most politicians, when they lie, it's for their own personal gain. For this, it's for the gain of Allah. So these people are very religious in a sense and very devout with what they do. And yes, there is a concept which many people have heard about talk called taqiyya, which is not just lying, but it is deception that will advance Islam. There's your principle of Sharia. Tell the truth if it will advance Islam, but if you cannot advance Islam by telling the truth, then you may tell a, well, we call it a lie. A distortion of the truth. So here we have politicians, and they're here not for our sake, but their own sake. You know what bothers me about this is that you and I seem to be one of the very few people who are holding a conversation about these people. This conversation could not be held on that on mainstream media. Why do you think that is? People are frightened, and don't and look. I've never been harmed by a Muslim. Let's get that straight. I've never been threatened by a Muslim. The people who've harmed me are people who are not Muslims. And they try to harm me, but one of the ways they harm me is I'm a racist, hater, bigot, Islamophobe. Now, it turns out I don't care what names you call me. I'm going to do what I do. But Barry, you know this from your own personal experience. There are an awful lot of people who will shut up if they think you're going to call them a bigot and a hater. They'll just say, okay, I won't say anything. So I'm, we're slowly being... The most, you know how you get all those rights they give us in the Constitution? I think the most important is the freedom of speech, Barry. Because if you don't have freedom of speech, what does freedom of religion mean? If what does freedom of the press mean if you don't have free speech? So our most precious element of our civilization and human existence is now we're being taught, oh, don't think that, don't say that, because if you do, you're a bad person. So would it be fair to say, if I'm going to put you on the spot here, <laughs> that the vast majority of people that serve in our government as public servants, executive branch, legislative branch, the court system, administrative members on a personal, on a perpetual basis of the bureaucracy may have a political agenda, but the agenda is for America to survive with the constitution intact. Yes. Would you say then that if you are a believer and a follower of Islam, you have a different, non-compatible agenda, which is what Jefferson said in the 18th century. Well, you know, Tom was right again. It is incompatible. And no one wants to talk about this because, they, let me tell you, if you do talk about it, you'll be called a bigot. This is personal experience, but it is simply true. We do not honor blasphemy laws, and yet Islam is filled with blasphemy laws. So it is simply not compatible politically. 
And I, I, we can go on and on about the point, but it's simply Islam is not compatible. One in in a hundred years or two hundred years, there'll either be a Sharia society here in the North American continent, or there'll be a, a rather regular some form of democratic or whatever. But they intend for it to be a Sharia society. And by the way, they're quite successful at voting. Muslims take to politics like a duck goes to water. They're really quite good at it. They'll have voting blocks at the level of 90, 90 to 90 to 98% uh, voting blocks. Yeah, the proof of what you've just said is in Minnesota. Yep. And it's very clear, especially around Minneapolis. It's unbelievable voter turnout and it's, and it's literally right down the prescribed voting selection that is passed out. Muslims don't play. They're very serious about what they do, and they're very clear about what they do, and they're brilliantly good at it. These are the most, these are some of the most brilliant political types I've ever lived. I've already praised Muhammad as being a master warrior. These are master politicians. They want to. Here's the deal, Barry. We're playing to tie. They're playing to win. How do you think that works out on the sporting field? <laughs> I get it. I really do. Thanks for joining us on ATP Report today, and a special thank you to Dr. Bill Warner. Please go to his website, Political Islam, and start ordering what he writes. You need to read it. If you're not educated and you're ignorant, you're not going to be able to protect the way of life that you've come to know and love. I also ask you to take out your cell phones and text TRUTH, T-R-U-T-H, and send it to 88202. You'll be subscribed to our text message service. It's free. You'll get all of our videos and writings like this one today on your cell phone. You don't have to do anything other than look down at your phone. 88202, send the word truth. For ATP Report, I'm Barry Nussbaum.